Today we're going to look at how I did this underpainting for my badger and pastels. Stick with me. Had to think about that for a second. Not my favorite paper to work on. I'm starting out with my yellows. It's a really deep golden yellow there that I'm using. I'm going to speed it up so I don't have to watch too long what I'm doing. I think what I love about pastels is, especially with backgrounds, I can be as messy as I want and it blends out beautifully. Now what I'm going to do here is put in these deep golden yellows. I'm using uh, Prismacolor New Pastels for this. Then I'm going to come back and add in some lighter yellows. Oh, not sure what happened there. Technical difficulties. Here's my lighter yellow just going to scribble that in because on the far left side I'm going to come in with a black and I want to fade my golds and yellows into that black and make it kind of ethereal smoke like swirls into it by the end. So here I'm just covering the pastel paper. I want to get it as covered as I can so I can get a nice even coating of pastel. I wish I went this fast. It, it goes faster than color pencil but Still, this is sped up quite a bit. <laughs> Pretty soon I'm going to go back to my uh, yellows again. Come on. There we go. I want to darken that up and get as much pastel as I want. Now you'll see some pastel dust falling on my uh, badger's head. Don't worry about that. I'm working upright, so some of that dust is going to fall down, but it's not going to affect the final picture. Anything that even remotely sticks can be covered up easily. Bringing in some more of those lighter yellows. And now I'm starting to blend. Now here, I have to warn you, I have a thing. I like to blend with my fingertips, but if you blend too much or for too long, you can literally rub the skin off your fingers. So you got to be really careful if you're using your fingertips. But I just haven't found a sponge, sponge applicator like I've tried soft tools. Not real happy with them for doing pastel work with regular pastels. So my good old fingers. You'll see me switch fingers around too when I switch colors. And I'm not worried about the black getting into the yellow or the yellow getting into the black because that's where I want it to combine anyway. And it'll make those little hazy areas sort of like smoke. Now technically this is not Harry Potter endorsed in any way, but I have to say I'm a proud Hufflepuff and so that's why the yellow background on my badger because it's Hufflepuff. It's the Hogwarts house got to show my pride here. And I'm planning to do three other pieces. I I bet you can guess what they might be. One's definitely a lion's head. One will be not a raven, but an eagle. Because technically Ravenclaw, their mascot is an eagle. And of course, a snake. Coming back with some of the lighter colors. I really want to mingle them all together. And you'll see I'm being real squiggly, and I, I like that. It won't stay as uh, fine details as it looks here once I blend it out. But it gives a really nice look to the pastel swirling around like smoke. Kind of like a Patronus, I suppose. I don't have to be terribly careful about my edges around my badger because like I said I can cover that up easily with the pastel but I still try to be careful. Once I finish that up, that right there, that tool you're seeing is a silicone color shaper and it works wonderful for getting in tiny little en edges to blend little corners and tight spots or fine lines. So that is definitely one of my go-to tools. I was so happy when I found that. Blending it out, blending it out. 
Now this background won't be perfect, it's just the underpainting. So after I finish the entire badger, I'll go back and touch up the background as needed. There I'm smudging it out some more with my fingers. A little more gold. Sorry about the angle on this, I'm still trying to figure out the best setup and the angle of the camera is not really picking up the colors very well. A little bit of a glitch there, that's fun. I really love making those squiggles. Can you tell? Does it show? Am I a little fanatical about these little swirls here and there? More smudging. And you can probably guess what I was watching while I was uh, working on this piece. Yeah. Harry Potter fan. What, what else am I going to watch but Harry Potter, of course. I was in a Deathly Hallows kind of mood while I was working on this, so I had that playing in the background. Hence a voiceover, because the funny thing about watching a movie while you're uh, recording a video, something about copyright, I don't know. <laughs> More squiggles. It's all a process of building up layers until you get it the way you like it. If something doesn't look right, that's fine. Go back over and do another layer. I've had this idea since we went to a Potter Fair last week, and I've just been so excited about the thought of getting started on these pieces. I thought they'd be really fun. Something a little different. And maybe you're a Harry Potter enthusiast, but you're not an animal wildlife person. This could fit the bill of having a wonderful wildlife piece that is also Harry Potter related. I really added a lot of squiggles. Can you believe it? And like I said, I'm going to be touching up the background after I finish the badger, so yeah. Well, I do know I had quite a long uh, film here. Quite a long video that I had to speed it up. And I got it down to 26 minutes. Yay! And now the badger. Yay! Now I started off with this medium gray. And I'm putting that all over the white areas. I'm trying to keep my strokes somewhat in the same direction of the fur. At this point it really doesn't matter that much, but I just like to be in the practice of going in the direction the fur is going. And even though that hair is white on the badger, it's never completely white. And you need those grays in there to define the hairs better and show the shadows. You'll see me pause every once in a while because I'm looking at my uh, reference photo. Oop, yep. And that's when I wasn't paying attention to the reference photo and I kind of smudged in the wrong place, so I was trying to smudge it out a little bit. Again, not a big deal because I will go over that with black or a very, very dark gray, I should say. More of that white fur. I really love the look of European badgers. They're so beautiful. Little ear tuft there. Now as I was doing this, I realized even this medium gray was a bit too light. So you'll see me come back here in a second with a darker gray because I really want to get those the depth in the fur so that when I put the white over the top it'll stand out better. Now I'm coming in with the deep dark gray 
Not quite black yet, but a nice dark gray. I did my grid lines in a uh, gray Carbothello pencil, pastel pencil. There's the darker gray coming in. And technically, I think I could have gone even darker than that. And this is going to look pretty rough for a while because this is just the underpainting. I'm not doing any details on this one right, right now. Do, 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 do. There we go. Now I'm coming in with that really dark gray again. You'll see where I cleaned up that one spot here in a second. Maybe. Maybe not yet. Here we go. And there I fixed it. All gone. Like it never happened. Shh. Don't tell anybody. That'll be our secret. And I'm going up ahead. There we go. Get in that ear there. I really love working with pastels because they're so much fun. I like getting my hands dirty. I like how quickly they go down and how easily you can change things if you make a little mistake. And I like how they look when they're finished. Especially something with fur, it has a nice softness to it. Absolutely love pastels, so glad I found them. And if you're curious how I found out about pastels, it's because I was following Jason Morgan Wildlife Art. You can find him suggested in my channels, channels I suggest on the side of my main page. And Jason Morgan's a fabulous oil painter. And he started working in pastels and I was mesmerized. Had to try it. So thanks to him, I'm working in pastels and loving every minute. So go check out his channel. He's awesome. And smudging, that's, can you tell? That's one of my favorite things to do. I love blending it out with my fingers. You can see I didn't blend real smoothly because I wanted to keep some of those darks and lights in that gray because in the end that'll help define the direction of the fur that'll add some depth so I don't want it too smooth I don't want it all blended kind of muddied together okay a little more in the ear Almost time for the nose. I love the angle of the face of this badger. That's one of the reasons I picked this reference photo. I got the reference photo from Pixabay. And it's a beautiful full body shot of a European badger. But I just loved its face. And for the projects I'm doing, I just wanted a profile of the face. Here we go, a little more. It's funny how sweet badgers look. But you know they can ruin your day in a hurry if you make them mad. Oh, there we go. Adding a little more to that back. That fur back there is slightly out of focus, but it's definitely multicolored, so I'll be adding lots of layers there, especially when I'm detailing. And here's the nose. Now I won't bring it back. I can speak, really, I can. I promise. 
I won't be bringing in the Carbothellos until the next video because that's what I use when I'm detailing and finishing up the piece. So I'm using the new pastels, um, which are pastel sticks by Prismacolor, to block in my colors in the underpainting. Now he's got a nose! Cute little nose! So I pretty much keep fussing with this for a while, as you can, you can see here. I'm actually bringing the black in on that lower area, but it's kind of hard to tell with the light. I'm definitely going to have to set it up better, so that you can see more of what's going on in the black fur. There we go. Adding some black in there. And that's about it. So I just want to say thank you for joining me for this underpainting and I hope you'll come back so that you can see more when I go ahead and uh, do the next step which will be adding some details. If you like what you see please hit that subscribe button and hit the like button and if you want to share it with others please do and I'll see you next time. Until then, keep creating! Bye!